Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up movement, uh, camera movement and camera zoom in a, like a top down kind of RTS city builder kind of game mode. But we're doing this in Unreal Engine 4.25 and we'll be starting with a blank project. So let's just jump straight into it. Um, so you want to do is once you've got the engine installed, create a new project, I'm going to make a blank project. It's going to be blueprint. You can do this in C++ if you want to. The logic is the same, but obviously you'll be doing it in code as opposed to blueprints. Um, and once it's working in blueprint, if you want to, you can put it into C++. Um, so I'm just going to make a new project. I'm just going to call this RTS camera project. We'll just create that project. Um, you can choose where you want to save it. And I'm going to hit create project and we'll just wait for that to load. Okay, so that's now loaded. And you can see we've got a completely blank project. There's nothing in it. It's just our kind of default world. Nothing in the content browser, but we're going to change that now. So if you right click in the content browser and go up to uh, blueprints and then, and then make a new blueprint, you can select. Uh, first, we need to make a new game mode um, so we can swap the default pawn. So I'll be clicking game mode base. And then we'll just call this BP underscore my game mode, just like that, Gamdi mode, game mode. And then straight away, I'll make a new blueprint. I'm going to set this as a pawn, which means that we'll be able to possess it and use it as our camera movement. I'm just going to call this uh, my pawn. Now, if we go up to project settings up at the top, uh, this may not be here. You may just have this. Uh, you can go up to edit project settings. Um, I always keep it docked here because I find I'm going in and out and adding inputs and stuff like that. Um, we're going to do a couple of things in here. The first thing we want to do is go under maps and modes. And then where it says game mode base, we want to select BP my game mode, which is the one we just made. And then if we spin out this uh, selected game mode, under default pawn, we can select uh, BP my pawn. You do, there's no save button that just saves automatically. If we go back to untitled. Um, and then if we hit play, see now we're our default pawn, we can't move. Um, it just spawns us in. We have a camera like looking at the world, but we can't do anything. So to help manipulate this pawn, we need to go back to our project settings and set up some inputs. You're going to want a couple of inputs here. Make two axis mappings just to start with. I'm going to call this one move forward. And then we want a move right. And now to move forward, we're going to use uh, W on the keyboard. And that's going to be scale one, uh, which will be moving us forward. And then we can do uh, S as our second input. And we'll swap this over to minus one. For move right, um, we're going to want D on our keyboard. And that's one, a scale of one. And then we want a scale uh, A to move left. And that's going to be a scale of minus one. Um, and actually, we want to be able to rotate the camera. So we want a... Uh, rotate cam and for this I'm going to select E as my rotate button um, and that's going to have a scale of 1 and then I'm going to press Q and have this uh, scale of minus 1 and then the last axis mapping I want is a camera zoom we want this to be the mouse uh, wheel axis and we want this to be minus 1 um, because currently, if we left it at 1, when we scrolled the wheel up, we'd zoom out. Um, and when we scrolled it down, we'd zoom in, which isn't kind of how I'd want it. If you wanted it inverted, you can just uh, carry on following along, but leave that as 1. But I'm going to go with minus 1. With that all set up, if we go back to our blueprint, my pawn, and I'm just going to dock this over here. So you see this is our pawn. There's nothing on it. Um, currently, we can't really do anything or manipulate anything. Um, so we just want to fix that. So... First of all, I'm going to add in a spring arm component and then I'm going to select the spring arm component and then add in a camera. So you can see that our spring arm here, when we move this, it's controlling our camera. And with the spring arm, to zoom in and out, we're going to be manipulating this. So as the target arm length comes down, we zoom in and as we uh, increase the target arm length, the camera zooms out. And now for the top down look, I'm going to Press E on the keyboard to get the rotate wheel. I'm just going to turn up. You can go kind of full on 90 degrees, which is going to be completely down. Or we can go kind of like 70 degrees, and that'll give us a bit more of a kind of angled top down look. It's up to you what style you want. This is going to work either way. And um, this is just personal preference. And then we also want to add in a floating pawn movement. 
and then just hit compile, hit save, and then go over to the event graph. So in the event graph, if we just go to a blank area, and if we search for the input axes that we set up before, uh, make sure you get the axis event, not the axis values. So that it was move forward, then it was move right, and we had a rotate right. Nope, that's not what we want. But no, sorry, we had rotate cam, and then we had a zoom camera zoom. So straight off the bat, I'm just going to make a couple of functions here to keep our code nice and tidy. Um, so the first function I'm going to call, I'm going to call it move forward, and then we're going to have a move right, then a rotate cam, and then finally a camera zoom function. And let's just drag these out onto here and connect them up. I'm going to hit compile. And then on all of these, I want just to add a, an input parameter. And I want this to be a float. And I'm just going to call this axis value. And I'm going to do this on all of them. And now we can take our axis value here and just pass it in, just so this is all set up, uh, ready for us to use it. So going over into our move forward, um, just very simple. We just want to get an add movement input. I'm going to drag this up here, connect this to here, connect the axis value to the scale value, and then we want to get get actor forward vector, and then plug that into there. Hit compile. Go over to our move right. Add movement input. Again, just connect these up. And then we want to get uh, get actor right vector. We press compile, hit save, and then press play. See that now with WAS and D, we're moving our camera around. If you want a bit of control over the movement speed, as you saw, that was quite fast. What you can do is if we make a variable here called movement speed, make this a float, hit compile. So now we can set a movement speed. If I do 0.5, drag this out. Uh, if you hold down control and drag out, that gets it. So you can get the value there. And then we want to come off this, press uh, asterisk to get a multiplication. I'm going to drop, drag this into the top slot, this one into the bottom one, and then plug that in there. And I'm just going to select these two nodes, press Control C, and then just drop them over here and do the exact same thing. Just drop that in there, drop that there, hit play. Now you can see it's uh, a lot slower. So you might want to change this to, say, 0.7. I'm liking the way that's feeling. You can also have a bit of control over it under the floating pawn movement. You can set the max speed, the acceleration, deceleration. You can change all that and play with that to get kind of the movement that you desire. Now, those functions are done. We can close them. Uh, now, for the rotate camera function, uh, this gets a little bit more tricky. Uh, we just want to right click and then get set actor rotation. Drag that over here. And now we want to get the current actor rotation, drag this off and do a break rotator just so we can keep it a bit more organized. I'm going to come out of the axis value, press posh, uh, asterisk to get a float. I'm going to right click here and promote this to a variable. And I'm just going to call this the camera rotate speed. And I'm just going to set this to a value of two for now. From this set actor rotation, I'm going to come out of here and uh, choose make uh make rotator now we want to plug the roll into the roll the pitch into the pitch and now your is what's going to rotate our uh, pawn so if we drag a uh say a cube into the world you can see that this red arrow is our forward vector and if we wanted to rotate the camera uh, we'd use the blue rotation here which if you go up to the details panel, you can see that the blue rotation is the yaw. So that's the one that we need to manipulate to spin our camera around. So I'm going to go back to our rotate cam. I'm going to take our current yaw and add the new value to the current value and then set it here. So we press compile and click play. 
Now, as you can see, we're going around, and if we press Q, this rotates our camera around. And then if we press W, we go forward compared to our new rotation. If you hadn't have done this based on the forward vector and you were just manipulating the actor's like position in the world, um, things get really confused. And as you spin, it ends up messing up the controllers. So this is why we've had to set up using the forward vector. So we always know that we're going forward relative to uh, the camera. And you can see we can spin, we can move forward, and we can manipulate through our world. You can see a bit of an issue there where as we go over to the cube, um, it's clipping uh, we can fix that if we go over to my pawn go on to the spring arm and search for collision and this do collision test we uncheck that and then press play you see that that doesn't happen now uh, what was happening is the camera was inside the cube and it was uh, freaking out a bit another way to avoid that is if we drag the player start just up slightly just so it's off the ground plane um our actor will spawn here um, not down here. So we press play. Uh, we're a bit more zoomed out, but we wouldn't have been hitting the camera anyway. Okay, so that's moving forward and rotating the camera setting. Uh, so, so we just need to do the camera zoom now. So we just want to make a variable down here. It's going to be a float again. And we're going to call this uh, cam zoom destination. And then I'm going to hold out alt to drag this. And I'm just going to set it here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to eventually go from the uh, current target arm length to our new destination and we're going to interpolate between those two values smoothly um, to get a nice kind of smooth scroll zoom in. So to do that we want to get a reference to our spring arm by holding our control and dragging our spring arm in and if we come off the spring arm we can set target arm length. I'm just going to drag this here out of the way. So now I'm going to make another variable called zoom speed. And again this is going to be a float. And I'm just going to set this by default to around about 50. Um, and again, we can tweak this depending on how we think it feels for our game. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control, get the zoom speed, going to come out of the axis value, multiply, float by float, drag in the zoom speed up here. I'm going to drag this back. And then from here, I'm going to add that, uh, add this destiny, add this uh, zoom to the cam zoom destination and I'm going to set the cam zoom destination uh, to our new value. So what this is doing is it's getting the current destination and it's adding the new value to it, which changes where we're going to want it to go. So now we've set our camera zoom destination. If we come out of here to uh, an F into two, then we can plug this into the target arm length. And we want to interpolate. I'm actually going to hold down alt and click um, current to clear that. So what we're going to do is we need to interpolate between our current arm length and then the new arm length, which is this uh, cam zoom destination. So to do that, I'm going to bring our spring arm back and get the target arm length. So we're going to go from our current target arm length. Our target is our new target arm length. I'm going to call, I'm going to rename this just to make that uh, make more sense. So this is going to be the new target arm length, and we're going to get the world delta seconds to plug into the delta time. And then our interp speed is uh, going to be 15. Um, again, we can change this depending on what we feel is right. So we hit play. You can see that that now works. We can zoom in. It's quite a nice, smooth zoom. Uh, but currently, we can carry on zooming forever and ever and ever, which we don't want. Um, we want to be able to set a max distance and a minimum zoom distance. So I'm just going to drag this over. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to get a clamp float. Drag this up here. I'm going to get this value and I'm going to make it. So I'm going to right click on minimum, promote this to a variable. I'm going to call this the minimum zoom level. I'm going to right click on max here, promote that to a variable, and I'll call that maximum zoom level. Then I'm going to change our minimum here for a default to be 100 and then maximum to 600. I'm going to compile and save, hit play. You can see that as we zoom, we, I can't, I'm carrying on scrolling, but I can't go past the 600 target arm length. And when we zoom in, I can't zoom more than 100. If we wanted to, we could change this to 50, press
press compile, hit play, and that let us zoom further in. And then kind of the final thing I'm going to do is on begin play, I'm going to grab the spring arm, set the target arm length, and I'm going to set this by default to half of the maximum zoom. I'm going to get the maximum zoom level, float divide by float, divide this by two. So that'll take our maximum zoom level, halve it, and it'll set our target arm length to half of this. And then we're also going to need to get our new target arm length and set that to this value just so we don't end up zooming in um, straight away from the start. And just to make sure all of this is working, I'm going to print string and I'm going to print the value of our target arm length just to test that that's working. So you see here we're at 300, which is half of our maximum zoom. If I scroll in, I've gone to 50. And if I zoom out, I've gone up to six, well, close to 600. So now we can move around, we can zoom in, we can rotate, we can carry on moving, we can rotate a bit further. If you don't want them to be able to spin all the way around, you can feel free to put a clamp in on that value to make sure they can't go uh, more than sort of like minus 90 to positive 90, which you can see I've just added in here. So that'd be take the yaw from our rotation and just clamp it between minus 90 and positive 90. Uh, you might even want to do minus 45 to 45. So now as we rotate, we can, we can only go so far in a certain direction. So yeah, hopefully that all made sense. If you've got any further questions, make sure you just leave them in the comments below and I'll definitely uh, get back to you. I'm going to put this project onto my Patreon. So if you if you head over there and you can subscribe, you'll get access to all of my previous tutorials, uh, Blender tutorials and any uh, Unreal Engine tutorials I do. If you watched this video and it helped you on your game dev journey, it'd be great if you could give me a, a like and consider subscribing to see more uh, of these videos that I do in the future. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.